Hello everyone and welcome. We are sitting inside of the 2023 Nissan Z. Now you'll notice there's not a number preceding that Z unlike the previous 370Z or 350Z, 300ZX, uh, 240Z. So each of those numbers used to represent the engine size uh, in liters. So the 370Z had a 3.7 liter engine. Well, we can't do that anymore because this has a 3 liter V6 and that would make it a 300Z and we've already had a 300ZX. So we are at the Nissan Z. So let's start there. Let's start with the engine and work our way through this new machine. So this has a three liter twin turbo V6 revving to 6,800 RPM, unlike the previous 3.7 liter, which revved up to 7,500 RPM and was naturally aspirated. So the strategy now is two small, very high revving turbos. They rev over 200,000 RPM, these turbos. Uh, so small, but high revving that gives you response uh, versus, you know, if you want a large turbo, you get big power, uh, but then your downside is you have lots of turbo lag. So small turbos used here in order to minimize lag. And we are now at 400 horsepower and 350 pound-feet of torque. So about a 20% increase in horsepower and a 30% increase in torque from the previous generation. And more importantly, if you look at the torque curves, this engine is hitting peak torque at just 1600 RPM all the way to 5200 RPM. And at 5200 RPM is where the previous generation actually hits peak torque. So we're at peak torque long, long before uh, the previous generation, thanks to these small turbos that rev up very quickly and give you plenty of boost. And so we have more power. Now, this engine is not new. It is the same engine used in the Infiniti Q50. Uh, so you can think of this uh, in some ways as a 370Z that's had an engine swap and it now has this twin turbo three liter engine. With that engine, the only mechanical difference aside from a different ECU and you know tuning you need to this vehicle, the mechanical difference is that it has a recirculating valve for the intake. So when you're on the throttle and then you let off, you're not dumping that wasted boost uh, and just throwing it out into the atmosphere. You send it back into the intake and then recirculate it. And so that gives you a little bit more preparation. So say you're going through a gear shift, you can hold on to some of that pressure and not have as much lag between shifts getting back to full boost. So the one mechanical difference versus Q50 is that they've added that uh, recirculating air intake valve so that you can have better boost as you go through these shifts or as you let off throttle and then get back onto throttle. As far as the engine, it's actually better than I thought it was going to be. I'm not a huge fan of turbocharged engines overall. I love naturally aspirated engines. Uh, and if you have to have more power, I like supercharged engines just because of how controlled they are as far as response. The, the right pedal does exactly what you want it to and you get it very quickly. Uh, it's not bad in here, but you definitely obviously have turbo leg, right? You put your foot down uh, and there's kind of like two stages. I mean, this is a decent size engine, three liters. So you get some immediate torque and then you wait a little bit and then you get that turbo boost. And it's kind of this like two step process where it goes one, here we are at naturally aspirated power and then boop, both those turbos spool up very quickly and then you get to your next power level. Uh, so it is noticeable on track driving, I didn't really have a problem with throttle modulation in the manual transmission car, but it was a bit challenging for me, honestly, in the automatic transmission car. So I felt like when I was in the automatic, uh, I had it where I couldn't quite figure out exactly how much throttle to give it. And reason being is I would overshoot my target. So I think, okay, I'm gonna give it this much throttle and I'd end up stepping out the rear end. Now, part of that could be when I was in the automatic, you have your normal and sport mode. I had it in sport mode and they may just tune the throttle there a bit too aggressively where it's more of an on off switch rather than like a linear progression of power as you get your foot on. Again, turbos make that harder to do. Uh, and then automatics make that harder to do. It's searching for the right gear at these times. So there's a variety of reasons why you could have that happening. But personally, I found easier to control throttle in the manual, uh, especially on track, and not get the rear end kicked out as much. So let's get into the transmission options. We are riding in the manual. So this is the six speed manual. It's basically carryover from the previous 370Z. There's a couple small changes. So they have updated the synchronizers for gears one and two, and they've tried to make shifting uh, a bit more responsive, a bit more crisp. Uh, they've added a few elements in order to change the shifting feel and make shifting through one and two also feel improved with those updated synchros. Now, the automatic is completely new 
to the Z. So it is now the nine speed automatic transmission, a uh, similar transmission that they are using in the new Frontier uh, going in the Z. So nine speed now means you have a widespread of gear ratios. Uh, you can make that thing a bit more efficient and also get really good launches out of it. Now there are two significant trim differences and then we're in the Proto, so that's really a third, uh, but you have the Sport or the Performance. And with the Sport, uh, you're not getting launch control, but with the Performance, whether you have the automatic or the manual, you will have uh, an assistance for launch control. So with the manual, it'll hold the revs at a certain RPM. And then for the automatic, it will, you know, you hold the brake, you hold the throttle, and then you just let go of the brake and it gets everything right and you launch down the line. So we've got to try out all of them. The automatic is quicker, but not bad acceleration in the manual, honestly. And they say it is a 15% improvement in zero to 60 versus the 370Z. Moving back from the transmission, we have a carbon composite drive shaft, uh, reducing that rotational mass coming from the drive line. Then we head back to a new rear differential. So we have slightly taller gearing. Uh, we have an engine that doesn't rev quite as high. Uh, so the taller gearing is gonna give us a little bit higher speeds in each gear. And then also we have a new uh, differential back there. So instead of a viscous style limited slip diff, which again is performance only, uh, now we have a mechanical uh, clutch plate style mechanical limited slip differential. I said mechanical twice there just to make sure you knew it was mechanical. Now for the Sport, the entry level trim, you just get the open differential. And so really you have a big price gap between Sport and Performance. It's $10,000 difference, 40K for Sport, 50K for the Performance. Uh, but there are some major differences of, of why you might want to spend that extra 10K. And I wish some of these were optional. You didn't have to go all the way to Performance to get it. But key ones from a Performance standpoint, the limited slip differential, you get better wheels and tires, and you get rev matching with the performance. So you don't get rev matching with the manual and the sport. And you may not want that, so that's fine. I think it's great to have it as an option. You can turn it on or off in here. And so, you know, if you want to go on the track and not think about heel toe, you don't have to. Uh, if you want to cruise around in city traffic, not think about, you know, heel toe, great. You don't have to. If you do want to do it, you can turn it off. So I like having the option. And really those three things I think are kind of critical in going up to the performance. You also get a better interior. So you get better screen, you get better sound system, you get better seats, you get heated seats. So there are a lot of good reasons to go for that performance upgrade. Uh, though again, it, it does come at a significant price jump, uh, $10,000 to go for the performance. So moving from that differential out to the rear wheels, we now have larger wheels and tires, especially with the performance variant. And with the performance variant, you're also going to get larger brakes. Nissan says overall grip, thanks to improvements in structural rigidity, torsional stiffness of about 10%, uh, and bigger tires, better tires. Uh, because of all these changes to the suspension, the tires, and the body, they are getting an improvement of 13% in lateral grip. So significantly more grip for cornering. And that is all with a heavier vehicle. So spec to spec, if you look at previous gen versus current gen and you compare similar trims, uh, this vehicle weighs about 150 pounds more. So we're looking at about 3,500 to 3,600 pounds in the new Z, uh, depending on which variant you get, manual versus automatic, sport versus performance. So it is a bit heavier, but that makes sense. I mean, they have larger cooling requirements now, right? This thing has significantly more power. You've got those twin turbos. You have an inner cooler, which you have to have cooling for. You have a uh, engine oil cooler, which you have cooling for. And so the cooling requirements are greater for this vehicle. Hence that large uh, gaping hole in the front, the straight rectangle uh, that allows for all of that air to come through and help keep things cool. Personally, I think it would have maybe looked a little bit better if it wasn't just a straight rectangle. I think it seems like a very simple shape and it kind of feels a little off with the overall design. But overall, looking at the car, especially in person, I actually do really like the way it looks. And it is a significant improvement when you see it side by side with the 370Z. The 370Z really starts to look dated and this really has a modern look to it. So I like the way this looks. To me personally, the one take back as far as, you know, subjectively, how does this thing look? I wish they had just done something slightly different styling with the front grille. Now it is, you know, a bit of an homage to the previous generation Zs. And so they're keeping with that heritage uh, in the design. I just feel like it doesn't quite work super smoothly. 
Now, aside from the exterior, the interior is also a huge improvement. So this is actually a pretty nice place to be. Uh, I like the improvements they've made. You've got a digital display up front. You've got a nice large screen right here to your right. Uh, you know, you can hook up Apple CarPlay, all that stuff. And you still have your three gauge pods. So we have Turbo Boost. We have Turbo Speed, which again, this thing goes over uh, 200,000 RPM, that Turbo Speed. And then we have Battery Voltage, because you know, you always got to want to be keeping an eye on your battery voltage. Uh, I'm, I'm not sold on the battery voltage. I think maybe like oil temperature, oil pressure, something like that could be kind of useful to have up there. But you can go through these gauges here and get more information through the front display as well. So this is an interesting car, right? Because it's all new, like it's a whole new model. This is the Z, this is not the 370Z, but there is a significant amount of carryover. I mean, this thing is based on the same platform. It has the same wheelbase. Your suspension mounting points are pretty much the same. You have double wishbone up front, multi-link in the rear, just like previously. So it's been significantly updated. They do say that it is 80% by parts different, part number, uh, different than the previous gen. But to me, it's like, well, the engine is a ton of parts, right? And the engine's uh, from, you know, an Infiniti Q50. And so pulling that out, that's probably a large percentage of part number right there. So it is, to me, in many ways, and it behaves kind of like a Nissan Z, uh, 370Z, but it has a different engine. It now has electronic steering rather than mechanical steering, and you have a different style differential in the back. Now a clutch-based rather than viscous-based. So let's dive a little deeper into what this thing is like to drive. And so I spent some time on the track, and one of the things that was surprising to me to learn after driving on the track, and I kind of spoke with everyone that had also driven alongside me, and we all thought, hey, it feels softer. The car feels softer. So it has a good, comfortable ride to it. And what I was surprised to learn is that spring rates have gone up, damping rates have gone up, and roll bar rates have gone up. So everything has gotten stiffer, but the car overall, to me, feels softer than the 370Z. And I did get to drive them back to back very briefly. I don't know if from a weight standpoint, if everything is relatively stiffer, so that could play a part of it, uh, but they have made improvements to you know the suspension overall, and so I find the ride very comfortable. I do find that there seems to be you know a good bit of dive, and, and it leans back, it really does lean back, and you do have some roll out there on the track, so the body is kind of moving around out there on the track, um, but it felt controlled. Uh, aside from, for me again, going to throttle control in the automatic, I felt like it was a little punchy, and it was kind of easy to get the rear end out uh, but aside from that decently well controlled out on the track and as far as the steering what's interesting I actually like the steering and here's the thing I assume a lot of people are gonna say oh I can't believe they've gone to electronic steering I drove this 370 Z and this back-to-back -back, and steering didn't cross my mind and just going back to back I didn't really think anything of it and I wasn't actively thinking okay focus on the steering but I think that tells you enough when you just drive them back to back and you don't really notice that big of a difference. So to me, the steering actually still feels good. Uh, I am totally fine with it. As far as the shifting, there's definitely a healthy weight to the shift knob uh, and the clutch as well. Uh, it's got a good satisfying feeling going through the gears here and I do like having the rev matching. Uh, the shifting, you know, it, it feels a little kind of older and clunky style, but I mean, that's what it's coming from, right? This is the 370Z transmission. Um, so it kind of has that raw manual feel and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, that's kind of what people are going for when they're buying these style transmissions. Now I will say with this new engine, you can definitely outshift uh, as far as releasing the clutch too soon, how quickly those revs drop. So it's not that it has really bad rev hang, but you definitely can outshift it if you shift really quickly. You're gonna be pulling those revs down with the clutch rather than them just dropping naturally from the engine. Overall, I also just think I like this turbo engine more than I thought I would. I really like naturally aspirated engines, so I was kind of disappointed, uh, even though it is getting a healthy bump in power. And I'm honestly not that disappointed with how the engine behaves. Yes, you have turbo lag, you don't get perfect response, uh, but it's a good engine and it feels fitting for the car. So overall, I came into this thinking that this was a 370Z with an engine swap, and I thought that's exactly what it would feel like. And actually, it feels better than that, so I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised after driving this thing. Uh, you know, the new exterior, the new interior, the new engine, it all works pretty well together. And so overall, I think it's a pretty solid package, especially when you start looking at the entry level for the sport price versus something like the Supra. 
you're getting a lot more for your dollar with this at the 40k version uh, versus a Supra where you're down to you know the two liter turbocharged engine so getting this three liter twin turbo engine at that entry level price that's awesome uh, overall I have enjoyed driving this thing I like the turbo engine more than I thought it would it's definitely quick what a beautiful place to be driving this thing Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave them below.